Alright, in this video I'll show you how to manage a Novell DNS server using the Novell DNS DHCP console. And really this is the preferred way by most people. I prefer it. It's an easier tool I think to use than iManager for managing DNS. Now I'll sh first start off by showing you where you get it. Uh, when you log in on your server, just you come to the welcome page. We, we come to our DSFW server, come to our welcome page. We have this option right here uh, for client software. If we had iPrint installed, we've got uh, different drivers that are available. Get down to the DHCP consoles. So you can see we have Windows 3264 and also for for Linux. So if you just clicked on it, you can open it or or save it, untar it, and uh, unzip it and go ahead and, and install the RPM. And it's just an RPM. If you don't see this option, what you need to do is go into YAST, into the OES options, click on Novell DNS, and you should have this option right here. Make sure this is checked. By default it should be checked. If it's not, go in here, check it, say accept, and it will install this. And you'll, you should have this option. So I already have it installed. We'll start it up. Now one of the tricks uh, when you start it up is pointing it to the right server. And you want to put it, point it to an e-directory server. So here's our e-directory server. It, the DSFW is a dot four. So if I, by this is really the, the best one is to use an e-directory server and you can use this the regular port. Uh, but if you just have a DSFW server or you want to point it to a DSFW server, you need to remember that there are several different LDAP ports. There's a set of three different LDAP ports on a DSFW server. I've talked about it in another video, and there's some tids that talk about this too, and it's also in the documentation. You need to use the Novell um, ports for LDAP. So if you use a DSFW server, put a 1.636 here. Otherwise, you'll get an error logging in. So in this case, we're just going to use the e-directory server. And we just have our user, and we put in the password, and always, you know, as long as your certs are working, you can use SSL. So we'll log in, and this is what it looks like. And just give it a minute, and then the Novell DNS it will will turn, uh, will, that X will be removed. So start off a few things here. It has a list of our zones. You can just open it up and it's real easy to see the records and that's why I prefer it and, and most people I talk to they prefer this also. So we can come in here and we can see our different zones and our, our, two, our zones in the records. It's just really easy to, to take a look. Alright, so, so like here's our DSFW server, we see the IP address. It's all right here. Now, uh, let's a few things across the top here. We want to create something. So if we start up here, we can create a new zone, a server zone, or DNS keys. If we click on our zone, click the create button, it gives us, uh, you know, again op options within it, um, what what we want to cr create a resource key or or whatever. So you can, you know, select it. I suggest wherever you want to s install or create the object select that zone and say new and resource key and and go from there unless you're doing a brand new zone then I would st just click at the top say new and say zone click zone so that's the first part that's uh, creating an object so this is deleting an object if you select that and delete your zone you just beware what you're deleting uh, this right here is the refresh so if you make a change Make sure you come and click this refresh button so that it writes it out to eDirectory. Again, this is uh, it's like going through and clicking the done in iManager, going all the way through and clicking done. This needs to be checked or clicked on before you exit out. Really, if you made a change and you haven't clicked the refresh button, it will prompt you say, "Hey, would you like to save these changes?" But I'd recommend you know making a change and clicking the refresh button just so it writes it out as you're going along. So it, it's all right there. So that's our refresh button. This is our import button. 
So say we want to import a new zone. We, this is how you do it. You click this button and browse to the file and say next and it'll import it. The other option, if we're on a zone, we can export. This is a real easy way to export a zone. Uh, this is why I recommend if you need, if you, say you have DNS set up on the DSFW server and you don't want it to be to stay here, you have a bind server or another Novell DNS or what, whatever you have, and you want to just move this over to that uh, to that server. Click export, and this will allow you to do that. Export the zone and then import it on your other DSFW or DNS server. Sorry about that. So these are some of the reporting options. So um, up here, just depending on on what you're doing, actually, I think we need to be on a server um, to to see some of these options. Like right here, if I click this, there we go. So the event viewer, um, the you know start and stop, move the move it, same type of options that we had when managing the DNS and I manager, the the Novell DNS server, not the zone, but the server. So again, if we click on the server, we have these options here: the zone forwarding list. So I can re add, remove, you know, same things. Forwarding list, who we don't want to forward, the different options that we'd like to have, uh, the the keys. So if we have T T keys, the access control, you know, who we want to back, uh, you know, if we want to say sorry, this, you know, we don't uh, don't don't work with this uh, other server. Don't take any queries from them. We, the, the, you can add that to the back blacklist. Advanced options. Uh, so, did right here again. This this is the 15 minutes. If you want it real easy to modify, if you want to say, eh, I I want to do it every day, every hour, or every say say if I try to do five, it will not allow us to do that. Gives us this lets us know it has to be 10. So 10 is the minimum. 15 should be just fine. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, so. It's just some options on the DSF DNS server object that you can make some modifications out on. So zone in, zone out, uh, transfers, all that's right here. If we click on the actual zone, we've got the options across here. It's just like in iManager, uh, but just easier to see and do. So actually. Let's delete that. That's a, a wrong address. I noticed that before, but I just didn't delete it. So we do a new one. Border 192.168.102. There we go. So this is a this is just set up a forwarder for this zone. So my mouse is getting a little crazy on me. Zone outs, the uh, start of authority. All the information here, the time to live. This is in hours. You remember the other one was in minutes. Actually, you could change it to minutes, hours, or days. This is by default uh, hours uh, or minutes. Uh, for, you know, for the refresh and the retry. So, uh, just so you know about those settings, list again the T set keys. Control. Here is the update policy right here. So, this is unique to uh, DSFW or not it's generally not set up for you automatically when you install Novell DNS so this is set up automatically for DSFW so that you have dynamic DNS when workstations join the domain in case you didn't watch the Novell iManager management uh, piece uh, video I talked about that in, in there so you can only have one or the other so this if you want to add a server or a subnet or an IP address or, or what, ha what have you if you want to add that in here that you can allow for updates to your zone this way and that's generally the most common way but for DSFW we want to make sure that uh, we have it this policy in there so that workstations can automatically do it an update, you know, update their their uh, a record in the zone. This would be used if you had a DHCP set up so that your workstation logs in, gets its IP address, the IP address, and then it goes talks to the DNS, and through this update, allows it to go and update the the uh, you know dynamically update DNS and create a 
an A record for that workstation. So that's the standard way. This is the default DSFW way. So if you'd like to get rid of this and you you already have dynamic DNS configured, that is possible to do. You, you can just delete this and, and go with this one. So that is the, and then just again some more advanced uh, information if you'd like to make some modifications. So coming over here, so we made a change uh, to our forwarding list, so it's out asking us do we want to save this. So yes, if we move around, now it's written out. So say you want to go and create a, a record here. Uh, so we have this option, create a resource record. Let's create an A record for the eater-s1 server in this domain, and his IP address is uh, 192.168.103. So now we'll be able to resolve for for this uh, the eater one. So there's the DSW eater one, and if you notice over here, we can associate it with an object in e directory. It doesn't have to be there, but it's possible. You can click on this, browse down, and our eater server is over here. Eater server there it is so we could just click that and actually associate it with a, a actual object in e directory it's, again it's not necessary but that's just another option that you have if we move we're prompted you know if I click on something else we're prompted to save the changes out or click refresh and that will also do it so that was a overview of how to use the DNS DHCP console. There is an option, by the way, if you'd like to start it up. So you have multiple um, locator objects, and I've talked about this before. If you have whichever locator object it finds, is if you have multiple objects, that is the z the zones and the the DNS servers that it knows about is what it's going to give you. So if you log in, you're like, hey, I don't see my zone there. You might have multiple locator objects and in that case you can start it up let me close this down if we this stuff so if we go to our launcher go to the properties we can add this dash C option and put the context of the locator object and it's in a dot format so you, that is an option so that it will find the correct locator object by default that's not there you can go and add that so that you do find it again if you have multiple locator objects alright so I hope this was helpful and uh, we'll uh, continue on with the DNS saga here uh, in another video thanks for watching